Hello everyone, welcome back to Brian's Mysteries and Adventures on Trail. I hope everyone is doing well. Today we are going to be talking about a very mysterious case of a disappearance that occurred in Yosemite National Park. It remains unsolved to this day. We're going to be talking about the disappearance of Patricia Marie Hicks. I wanted to first start off by saying this is still an active, open investigation despite her going missing so many years ago. Here is a picture of Patricia who often went by Patty. She was in her late 20s, 28 to be exact. Very little is known in her earlier life. This is a picture of her high school portrait that was enhanced. We know that in the early 70s, she was married to a high school sweetheart for a little while. They were living in the state of Washington. Unfortunately, the marriage didn't really last that long. She got divorced in 1974. It was also around this time that Patty's brother was suffering from mental illness and did attempt suicide. He wasn't successful, but Patty was very upset by this. This is a picture of Patty right around that time. Her friends said that after both of these things, the divorce and what happened with her brother, her personality changed. They described her as being more impressionable and vulnerable to people. She became more trusting of the wrong kind of people. She moved from the state of Washington to Merced, California in 1982. This was roughly around the last time her family heard from her. It was in September of 1982 when she told her family that she had joined this religious group called the San Andana Church, led by this guy named Donald Gibson. The people living in the community did not look favorably upon this group. They looked upon it as a cult. They knew that members were being recruited by things such as how attractive they were, nothing to do with religious affiliation or anything like that. Her friends and family believe that she had joined this group because she was in a vulnerable state after the divorce and what happened with her brother. In December of 1980, several members of this cult were arrested, sadly including Patricia Hicks. After these arrests, the police really started an investigation into this religious group and Donald Gibson because many of the people that were arrested were telling them of these horrible things that this man Donald Gibson was doing. He was manipulating them with alcohol and drugs, abusing them in all kinds of ways. He instilled fear into them by telling them he would hurt them or their family members if they tried to leave. Donald Jean Gibson was tried and convicted the following year, September of 1981, of all kinds of crimes, abuse, assault. Unfortunately, right after he was convicted, he jumped bail. He fled the area and was never found, still has never been found. It was after Donald Gibson went on the run after his conviction that Patricia Hicks decided that she was going to leave the area. Patricia had become good friends with one of her roommates who had also been a part of this religious group. The roommate tried to convince her not to leave, but Patty said that she was going to catch a bus or some kind of public transportation and go to Yosemite National Park. Sadly, after leaving Merced, California and talking to her roommate, Patricia Hicks was never seen again. She just disappeared off the face of the earth. Let's talk a little bit about Yosemite National Park. For those of you that don't know, it's in California. It is the most famous, or some of you might think the most infamous park in California. It draws roughly 3.5 million visitors on average every year. People come from all over the world for a variety of different reasons to see the majestic view of all these amazing waterfalls, these amazing granite rock formations that you really can't see anywhere else. There are mazes of hiking trails that run throughout the park, beautiful areas for camping. There's also people that come for extreme rock climbing or bouldering. The park also offers these majestical sites that only happen once a year and only happen in Yosemite National Park. Like when the sun hits this one waterfall, it looks like lava coming out of a volcano. 
There's over 400 different species of animals that live throughout the park. Many people come to the park because they're artists and they want to get the best picture for doing one of their landscapes. During the summer months, you can drive through the entire park on Route 120. This was true of a family back in 1983. They were driving through the park in their van. They came down Glacier Point Road. I'm going to have a map up to show you. Along Glacier Point Road is this meadow called Summit Meadow that is absolutely breathtaking. People stop at this point for all kinds of things, bird watching, picnics. This is a map of the park and where this meadow is in relation to the general park. These are all pictures of Summit Meadow, just to give you an idea of what it looks like. This family on this day in 1983 had stopped at this meadow to have lunch, do some sightseeing, have a break from being in the vehicle. Nothing could have prepared them for what they were about to find, but one of them stumbled across something that looked like a severed human arm. They approached it and as they got closer, they could tell that's what it was. Screaming in horror, they had absolutely no idea what to do, but there's a park ranger station close by. They called the rangers, the police came in. The authorities transported the arm to the local medical examiner's office, where they could only determine at the time, because it was 1983, that it was likely the remains of a petite adult female. Based on their examination, they also estimated that it was there from some time in 1982. That was it. The Park Service was completely stumped. They didn't have any more information to go on. That was until 1988, when other people found a skull right across the street from Summit Meadow. I'm going to have the map up again to show you the area. When they did further examination on the skull, they could tell it belonged to an adult female. The thought was that the arm and the skull belonged to the same person, but they were not sure. At the time, they did a process called clay rendering, which they estimated features such as the jawline. This is the picture of what they came up with. They put a dark wig on her because they weren't sure of her ethnicity. It wasn't until 2009 when DNA science finally was able to match the arm and the skull both to the same person. Unfortunately though, they still had no idea who this person was. Several more years passed with them not having more information. That was until Parabon Nanolabs came along and did what's called phenotype testing. They were not only able to determine that she was of European descent, she had blonde hair and blue eyes and came up with this picture. Continuing their work through genetic genealogy, they were finally able to identify her in late 2021, although it wasn't actually made public until 2022. It was, in fact, Patricia Marie Hicks, who had disappeared all the way back in 1982 when she was just 28 years old. They knew this was a homicide, so now they were trying to figure out what had happened to Miss Hicks and to hopefully get her and her family justice. The notorious serial killer Henry Lee Lucas confessed to this crime. He also said that he had done this with his companion Otis Toole. He claimed that the crime had occurred between 1980 and 1981. He apparently led officers back to the crime scene. He told them that she had been hitchhiking in the area. He had picked her up somewhere between Merced and the park. He said that they were having a good time, but they got into an argument because she wanted to leave the park. At this point, he says this is when he killed Patricia Marie Hicks. Keep in mind that this man actually confessed to over 3,000 murders, which the police knew he didn't do. Apparently, they were feeding him information, pictures, other kinds of details on the cases. 
forcibly trying to get confessions out of him to commit to crimes that he hadn't done. He is, in fact, a convicted serial killer, but a lot of these crimes he actually didn't commit. There's actually no proof that he did, you know, over 3,000 of these crimes. That said, many of the original detectives on this case believe that Henry Lee Lucas is the perpetrator. Citing reasons such as he was able to lead them to the crime scene, there was also Budweiser beer cans found at the crime scene which he was known to drink. Those beer cans are apparently being tested for DNA and other evidence. Other people believe that Donald Gibson played a part in this. There was also the other serial killer, Gary Stainer, that was active in the area. The really sad thing is that there still is no justice for Patricia or her family, and hopefully, through further testing, there will be. I want to dedicate this video to Patricia Marie Hicks, her friends, her family, all her loved ones, everyone who's had to go through this for all these years. I'm so sorry for your loss, and I hope and pray that you will get justice and you will find answers to what happened to Patricia. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for all your support, your comments, your feedback. Special thank you to co.ag for providing the background music. Hopefully I will see you all in the next one. Take care. Hey everyone, thanks for sticking with me to the end. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. It's free, it really helps out the channel a lot in all my efforts to help various search and rescue organizations. Definitely let me know if you have any case or video suggestions that you'd like me to cover on this channel. I always love hearing your thoughts and comments on any of the videos that I do, so definitely leave me some comments. Thank you for all my subscribers, everybody who watches, anyone who's donated. It means the world to me. I can't thank you all enough. Next video will be coming on Sunday, so hopefully you'll stay tuned for that. All right, everybody, be safe out there, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.